When we think about refugees, we often think about vast camps filled with tents in some of the world's most remote locations. However, an overwhelming number of refugees are now moving to cities, hoping to find a more permanent solution, like a secure place to live and financial independence. Today, 58% of the world's 16.7 million refugees live in cities. Kampala, Uganda. It's impossible to know exactly how many refugees are in this capital city, but the estimates range from 37,000 to over 100,000. Urban refugees often live in poverty with little to no knowledge of the local culture. Work is hard to find as they compete against other struggling Ugandans and are often discriminated against. Supporting this community is incredibly challenging as many fear deportation and avoid contact with authorities. Since traditional aid is not reaching the majority of the refugee population, new ways of providing assistance are desperately needed. Urban refugees don't receive any direct support. Basic need, they have to support themselves. Meet Robert Hakiza, the co-founder of Yarid, Young African Refugees for Integral Development. He came to Uganda as a refugee from his native country, Congo, six years ago. He noticed that all refugees face similar issues, like trouble finding work, a place to live, or learning the language. As a refugee himself, he decided to take matters into his own hands. We couldn't just sit down and watching our people are suffering, how the girls are involved in the prostitution, how the young boys are involved in the criminal activities. Robert and his friends decided that they needed to do something to help the community. We didn't have anything, but we say we have at least something in our mind. We can think, we can sit down, we can discuss and find some of the solutions of our problems. Yari's goals are to teach refugees basic skills, help them become self-sufficient, and integrate them into Ugandan society. Many refugees in Uganda are from French-speaking countries and can only integrate if they first learn English. As some of the refugees knew how to speak it, they started to teach classes. Today, Yari's English courses are wildly popular among the refugees. Another of their specialties are social media classes that they provide in partnership with an organization called Xavier. We think it's very important. We know how the social media is moving today worldwide. So we didn't want refugees to be left to be left behind. Many refugees come from a country where it is not safe to talk to the authorities, and they need to be taught about the laws and how to deal with police. This looks like a, a way to uh, educate people about what their rights are as yeah, refugees. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There is a Ugandan Refugee Act 2006 that shows the right and refugees here in Uganda. So many refugees, they don't know how about their rights, and it's very important that they know their rights and their obligations as well. A lot of refugee children are not able to go to school because their parents don't have the money to pay mandatory school fees in Uganda. That's how Yarid got an idea for one of their most successful programs to date, the sports programs for children. Even though they cannot provide a traditional education, the sports program keeps kids active, engaged, and creates a positive community, keeping them off the streets. We use sports like a tool to unite refugee youth and to resolve conflicts. Meet Christian Salumu, coordinator of the Yarid Sports for Development program. I became a refugee. It's via the conflict has been home in my southern Kivu. He got into political trouble trying to fight a government-backed gold mining company. If I remain in Congo, I could. I could be arrested, even to kill. After a dangerous journey with an illegal border crossing and speaking no English, he finally got to Kampala. Via my colleagues, they have shown me Yarid. They taught me English, and by now I'm proud to speak this broken English. No, but you speak I'm proud perfect of English. It. Yeah. <laughs> As an avid soccer player, Christian was offered a job in the sports development program. He now uses sports in conflict resolution. Our goal is here. Our goal is here. People they are coming from different countries. They brought also their conflict here. Congo can say, ah, me, I can't talk to Rwandans. They are ready to fight, even to kill each other. But via this small ball, we put them together, they play, and they become like a family. We have to be united. Right. Because even Rwandans, even Congolese can help you with each other. I'm noticing too that it's not just refugees that are out here, it's also Ugandans. They are mixed. This is another opportunity for them to integrate within the Ugandan community. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Yarid has been functioning since 2007, and the results are promising. We have supported so far almost 4,000 uh, refugees, and we have some uh, successful stories. We have some of them in town here 
who have opened their shops, who have managed to get employment because of the English that we have given them. Despite its humble beginnings, Yarid has become a well-known organization with international partners. Robert sees this as an encouraging sign of how simple, affordable, grassroots solutions can help solve complex issues like the international refugee problem. We have around the world today 15 million refugees. We want to see more grassroots organizations to come and also try to do something in their own communities.